everyone, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing top five books with the best world building in fantasy and this includes YA and adult fantasy and I just really enjoy doing these top five lists. I just think they're a really fun way to talk about some books that have really strong aspects in one way or another. I've done a few top fives in the past so I will link them up top or down below and I'll probably make a playlist for them since I've been starting to do more of them. They're just really fun and really great way to reflect on things that we enjoy about books. So with that being said, yes, today I'm going to be talking about world building. World building is such an important part of a book and especially a fantasy book. If a fantasy does not have strong world building, I probably won't like it. And so these are the books that I've chosen that I think have some of the best world building. This isn't to say that this list is all extensive because there are so many great books that I just know have great world building out there, but I haven't read them yet, so I can't include them on this list. So this is kind of, you know, just my own personal list for the books that I've read that I think have the best world building in them. And with that being said, if you have any books that you could recommend to me that you think have phenomenal world building, please leave them down below. I am always a sucker for a book with good world building. And you'll notice that a lot of these books on my list are some of my favorites of all time. So so for each book on my list, I'll give a short little summary about what it is and then talk about what specifically about the world building landed it on my list. And these are actually all series by the way. So <laughs> it just kind of works out that way in fantasy. Number five on my list is A Darker Shade of Magic series by V.E. Schwab, which consists of A Darker Shade of Magic, A Gathering of Shadows, and a conjuring of light and these are the exclusive collector's editions that i have collected over time because this is one of my favorite series it is the series that introduced me to v.e schwab and why i love her in the world of a darker shade of magic there are four parallel londons we have gray london which is our normal non-magical london red london where magic thrives and that is where our protagonist kel is from white london which is being slowly consumed by magic and bleached of life and black london which is completely destroyed only in Antari can travel between the parallel londons and that is what kel is and so he's sent out on a mission for the king of red london in order to deliver messages between worlds and in Grey London he encounters pickpocket Lila Bard. Lila Bard has lofty aspirations and so when she saves Kel from an attack she forces Kel to spirit her away to another world. However Kel has accidentally smuggled a dangerous object back into Red London and so danger is afoot. The thing that I really love about this world building is just how all of the parallel Londons work together and the magic system. I just think it's really cool to have these parallel worlds where in each world there's a different level of magic and the way that all of the worlds are bound together is really cool, especially with the fact that we have a bunch of different elemental magic in here as well as these Antari that can walk in between the different worlds. Also, I really have to give a shout out to Kel's magical coat because it is one of the coolest coats of all time and it is pictured here on the cover and as well you can see him wearing this magical coat in this fan art in this edition so yeah just a really really cool story with awesome world building for we have Something Dark and Holy Trilogy by Emily A. Duncan, of which there are two books out right now, Wicked Saints and Ruthless Gods. I'm actually reading Ruthless Gods right now, so <laughs> shout out to this book. But yeah, I had to put this on the list just because I think that the system of magic in here is really unique and cool. So the official summary is that we have three main characters. A girl who hears the whispers of the gods in her head, a prince surrounded by deadly assassins and would-be suitors, and a monster hidden behind pale, tortured eyes. And these three characters are thrown together because they have one common goal, which is to stop the war that has been raging between these two countries. And ultimately to do that, they are, they are going to attempt to assassinate the king. What I find so unique about this world building is definitely the intricate magic system. It's a magic system kind of unlike anything that I've read about before. So we have these two countries that are fighting against each other, 
Kalyazin and Travania and in Kalyazin, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right by the way, but in Kalyazin there are these people known as clerics and they hear the voices of the gods in their heads and the gods are able to grant them power. And then in Travania they are known as heretics because they have cut themselves off from the gods and they use blood magic. So there are these two warring systems of magic in which they work in very different ways and then we have the girl Nadia who can talk to all of the gods and not just one and so there's something special about her and we don't know what it is that makes her special or why she is that way but yeah it's just very gothic and dark and I will say that since this is blood magic there is definitely triggers for that gore self-harm and in the second book triggers for eye horror as well but I just absolutely am blown away by how intricate the magic system is and how it always keeps you guessing because it's so rich and complex and complicated and I kind of like a magic system where it really makes you think about what is the bigger picture, what's going on here as you slowly unravel the mystery. In spot number three, I have Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, which is a duology consisting of Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares and if you know me you know that this is one of my favorite series they're just so beautiful so Strange the Dreamer <laughs> Laszlo Strange is a war orphan and grows up among books in the library. Ever since he was young, he's been obsessed with the mythic lost city of Weep, which after an event 200 years ago, no one can remember its true name and it is only known as Weep. If he was bolder, maybe Laszlo would cross half the world to find it, but as he is a cowardly librarian, he does not venture very far from where he has grown up. However, one day a caravan comes into town asking for talented people to come on an excavation to the city of Weep and Laszlo jumps on the opportunity. And that is pretty much like where I'm going to leave off with the summary because there is just so much more to the story that like you don't want to tell people that haven't read it because it's just a treat to discover for yourself. The thing that I really find about this world building that drew me in is that Lainey Taylor kind of paints a picture of the world with her words and to me that makes it that much more interesting than rather if it was just written about plainly. The way that she's able to describe the city of Weep and the way that Laszlo is fascinated with it and the things that they discover once they're there is just really like captivating and it is very lyrical and moving and especially with these two books Stranger Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares there is a lot of talk of dreaming and kind of the dreamscapes that she's able to create in this world as well I just absolutely love because it really just gave you that feeling that dreamy feeling like you're in a dream and that is just a really strong suit in this book and I absolutely adore it for that very reason. Number Two on the list, we have the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Mass, which I could have easily also put Crescent City for Sarah J Mass in this spot as well because I also really adore the world building in that book, but I decided that since that series is not totally complete and there's only been one book worth of world building, I'll leave it for now. Um, but the book that I'm going to talk about today is specifically Era Fire, which is the third novel in the Throne of Glass world because I find that this is when the world building really starts to get expansive. I have a Throne of Glass reading vlog where I read the whole series in two weeks. I just really adore it and it means a lot to me. I just absolutely flew through the story because I was so engrossed in the world and the character development and what was happening. Selena Sardothian is an assassin fresh off a year in the salt mines after she has been arrested for being an assassin. She is called to the palace in order to compete to be the champion for the king, aka the, the king's official assassin. However, when the contestants start getting killed off one by one, it seems that there are larger forces at play. And that is the official summary for the first book in the Throne of Glass series. However, as we progress along, especially once we get to the point in Era Fire, where it's kind of where the floodgates open and there's just so much more to this world. And I think that while it isn't anything that is completely unique and out there, there is just so much of it and just the way that the characters and all of the different countries and politics are aligned and interwoven and as you slowly unravel the stories through the eight books in the series it's really just a lot of world building and because i'm just so enamored with the series and this world i had to include it on my list and i just truly have such an admiration for the thunder glass series and i absolutely 
will love it forever. There's just a lot to it and a lot more than meets the eye, especially from the description of the first book. And I just absolutely love how the world was able to slowly unfurl throughout the series. Whereas in the first book, it's kind of like starting off very typical YA. And as you go on and on in the series, it just gets deeper and deeper and more involved. And I really, really enjoyed that aspect. And so the series coming in at my number one spot is the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemisin, which consists of the fifth season, the Obelisk Gate, and the Stone Sky. This is actually a series that I don't feel like I get to talk about enough on my channel because I read it so long ago. I read it in college um, and I actually, this was before I like do anything about what books were popular like before i joined booktube i don't know how i found books to read like i pretty much would read random books or read books that were about to be book to movie or book to tv adaptations anyways that's a story for another day so i randomly found this one on amazon because it was like an award winner stuff like that so i decided to read it and it was honestly one of the coolest and most thorough world building containing series that I've ever read. Um, and the series actually won three consecutive Hugo Awards for best novel for each one in the series, which is like amazing. This is the way the world ends for the last time. So something known as a great red rift is open and basically the world starts spewing ash and plunges the earth into what is known as the fifth season. And so it basically because there's all this ash in the sky, people can't breathe, nothing will grow, and it's basically every person for themselves and they have to survive. In this book, we follow main character Essan as she comes home to discover that her husband has murdered her son and kidnapped their daughter. This occurs on the scene of the earth cracks open as well as across the mighty Essan's empire, thousands are murdered to serve a madman's vengeance. Essan doesn't care if the world is crumbling around her, all she cares about is saving her daughter from the clutches of her husband. This series is probably one of the smartest series that I have ever read and I can truly say that I've never read anything like it. Not only is just the world building so unique and like I can't even begin to describe it because there's just so much that I don't want to spoil but like when I tell you it has one of the most unique almost like magic systems and political world building and just like the fact that they have to survive in this like apocalyptic type thing and that there even is such a thing as a fifth season that can be triggered like it is just absolutely phenomenal crazy and like I wish I had better words to describe it but you know who has good words to describe it is MK Jeminson so you should read it so that you can hear what she has to say about the world that she's created and not me because I'm doing a terrible job of describing it. <laughs> But yeah, that wraps up my list of my top five books with immersive world building. I truly hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if there's any other sort of top five video that you would like to see from me. And also let me know your favorite fantasy books with the best world building in them. With that, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.